Hi, I'm Gene Bergman. I'm the Ward 2 City Councilor. That's an area in the Old North End, and I've lived in the Old North End for most of about, of over 50 years. And um, I'm really happy to be um, here with you tonight for the first uh, of the Burlington Progressive uh, TV um, hour or show that we've had uh, since the, uh, the, the pandemic started. So I'm really happy to, uh, to bring this back. And what we're gonna hope to do in the course of the, uh, the time is bring guests here to talk about really important and current issues uh, facing the city, maybe facing the region and the state and uh, perhaps the country and get um, us to be talking about things that uh, may not be talked about uh, generally. So I'm, I'm really excited about the, the opportunity to do that. And the first show that um, we've got is with Tyler Pastorak, who's over here. Hi, Tyler. And he is with uh, People for Police Accountability. He'll explain a little bit more uh, who he is. But this is to talk about the petition um, initiated and ballot item that was placed on the ballot, will be on the, uh, the town meeting ballot this March uh, in front of Burlington voters so that uh, people can vote on the creation of a community um, control board for the police department and in particular police discipline. So thank you for being here. Tyler, how about if you just sort of introduce yourself briefly? Um, great. Sure, thanks Gene. Uh, yeah, so I'm Tyler Pastoric. Uh, I'm a resident of Ward 8, so I live in downtown and I work in Burlington. Um, I'm also involved in some mutual aid projects in downtown and um, yeah, I've been uh, engaged with uh, different issues and city politics in Burlington for a few years now. Um, and uh, among those, uh, I'm part of a group called People for Police Accountability. And so we got together uh, in the fall of 2020 um, and we're the group that has kind of been carrying this um, police oversight proposal uh, forward um, through the, the initial city council process and um, then gathering petition signatures over the last couple of years and, and getting it on to the ballot. Great. Um, how about a little bit more background for folks on the people who've been involved and the process that brought us and to you know, having this on the ballot now, so including the petition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so back in 2020, um, folks will remember that all over the country, um, policing and, and um, police abuse really came into uh, focus around the country, and Burlington was no exception to that. Um, and so particularly uh, in the fall of 2020, black members of our community uh, led a movement that brought into focus the fact that our city charter gives the police chief unchecked authority over disciplinary decisions in the police department. Um, and this movement focused on some pretty disturbing use of force cases uh, with public body cam footage, um, where members of our community sustained some life-altering injuries um, or, or death. And so because of the, the charter and that the police chief has the, the sole authority over um, discipline decisions, uh, the best the city could do at this time was pay one of the officers $300,000 to resign. Um, and so as this particular part of the city charter, which is kind of like our city's constitution um, and it's, it's state law. Um, so um, yeah, part of that focus and, and the police chief having um, sole authority there, um, the sort of um, demands and asks shifted to addressing that issue in the city charter um, and establishing a board of community members that in cases of police misconduct uh, would have the authority to conduct investigations and make actual disciplinary decisions. Um, but so essentially at, at the time, um, you know, protesters were we're bringing this into focus and then certain city councilors were picking up on the issue and wanted to work with them to develop a proposal. Um, and then, you know, also at the time you yourself were, were offering 
um, some legal advising in terms of the the you know wording and nitty gritty of the proposal um, to to help match you know what community members wanted to to build. Um, and then also there were um, influences from organizations like the ACLU of Vermont um, had some guiding principles on on um, effective citizen oversight. And so this was really a collaboration of members of the community who have actually experienced um, harm by policing, you know, currently or generationally from our city councilors and legal experts and, and other organizations. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's interesting that people complain now, I think very wrongfully, that this mm -hmm. hasn't been vetted, there hasn't been enough process. But a, as you said, um, I was involved uh, with the uh, community group and also as a staff person for, uh, for the city councilor who was putting it forward, uh, Perry Freeman. And uh, so there was a, actually a lot of vetting. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a lot of meetings of the charter change committee. There was a lot of public input. There was a lot of testimony at the, uh, the city um, council. There were also involvement with the police commission. So um, the, 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 the argument that uh, the people haven't sort of seen this and this just sort of has come out of the blue is really a rewriting of history, which is, is unfair. It is unfair to you. It's unfair to, uh, to Perry. It's unfair, actually, to the city attorney, the city attorneys who, you know, looked at this and, 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 and worked at, on it. So um, I, I'm, I'm, talk to me then. Uh, to the sort of not quite fast forward, we, um, we get to a, a point where the council votes seven to five to put this on the ballot mm -hmm. for the, I think it was the 2021 ballot. Mm -hmm. And the mayor vetoes it and his veto is sustained. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about what people did um, after that, because it's been now a year, year and a half or so since. Yeah, so at that point, I mean, at first it, it was a big win that the city council passed it and um, a shame that the, the mayor, mayor prevented um, people in the town from, from actually voting on the proposal. Um, and so at that point, that group of us um, that you know, we've been calling ourselves People for Police Accountability, we decided, well, there, there's this other route to changing the city charter. Um, and if a, so if a proposal gets five percent signatures from five percent of registered voters in Burlington, which amounts to, I think it, it's, um, the actual number is, is just under 1,800 people, but inevitably some of them become invalid or, or things like that. And so we had signatures from just over 2,000 people. Um, and so we spent hundreds upon hundreds of hours talking to our neighbors, knocking on doors, going to public events, gathering signatures. Um, and so we actually did that for the year of 2021 um, and didn't quite have the organizing power to, to make contact with that many people. It's not hard to find people who are willing to sign it and in support of the proposal, but it, it just takes a lot of time to talk to that many people. Um, so then at that point, and so, so that's a whole year of public engagement and hearing feedback and thoughts about this proposal um, and some of the amendments that city council had made when they passed it. And so at that point, we decided, well, you know, at this point, we've, we've gotten all this input and there are some edits that we, we think could be made to this and, and to make it more robust if it ends up going to the state and to incorporate some of the feedback we've gotten. Um, so we sat down again um, with, you know, legal advising and, and, and made some edits to the proposal to improve it and incorporate feedback that was gotten. And so then we had to start from scratch in 2022, um, kind of kicked off on town meeting day. You might have seen us out at the polls um, gathering, yeah, 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 gathering yeah. signatures. Um, and so we spent the year 2022 gathering signatures um, and we were successful that time around. Um, and so once we submitted those signatures and the city clerk vetted them and validated them, um, then it goes directly onto the ballot for the 2023 town meeting day. Yeah. And, and I would say before we get into the, the, the next uh, point that that process, the process that you've got has been in the charter for quite some time. And it's really an effective um, democratic uh, uh, process 
that people can use if their government is not being responsive. So, um, I mean, it's really to uh, you guys' credit. It is not easy. Anybody who thinks that this is an easy process is, has not spent the time to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, now it goes before the voters. So, what in general, before we get into particulars, um, are voters being asked to approve and uh, expand if you, you know, on the reasons for it so we can reiterate? Yeah. Yeah, so this proposal, it focuses on the section of our city charter that gives the police chief um, disciplinary authorities. And so the first thing is that, that sole. Yes, gives the police chief sole disciplinary authority. Nobody else in the town, not the mayor, not the entire city council, uh, nobody at all has the authority to, to discipline officers um, except for the police chief. And so this focuses on that section of the city charter. The first thing that it does is strike that language and then it starts fresh by establishing a board. Now before I go forward, that language comes back. The, the police chief still has the authority to discipline of all kinds and is still the first, the, the police's internal process is still the first process for, for disciplinary de decisions and this board has the authority to, to step in and review or take up cases as they see fit. Um, so we'll get into those details a yeah. little bit. To... <laughs> yeah, so this establishes a board of community members that uh, in cases of police misconduct um, at their discretion can review investigations, initiate their own investigations, and make actual disciplinary decisions. Um, so that I think includes um, uh, suspension, uh, d uh, reduction in rank, and removal um, are the, the, the three options there. Okay, and uh, again, uh, why? Yeah, so I mean, so the, this movement in 2020 really brought into focus what happens, um, what can happen to a community and, and trust in our public safety systems when, um, when people in the community feel unsafe with, with um, police officers, um, you know, having this level of authority um, and, and using excessive force or, or things like that. Um, and if the police chief doesn't act in a way that feels alignment with what the community feels, uh, the city government, the community, nobody in the town has any recourse for that or, or solution to that. Um, and so that has uh, resulted or perpetuated a, a pretty strong you know, distrust um, in this aspect of our public safety system, particularly among folks who have experienced harm historically um, and, and currently. Um, and yeah, so this, this would allow community members a way to step in and say, hey, th this is not a person that we feel comfortable giving the authority to, to you know, respond to mental health crises at my home or um, respond to incidents armed and, um, you know, we don't feel safe with them having that authority and, and gives us, gives the community the option to, yeah. to say no to that. Yeah. Um, I would say that, you know, this is a, a fairly, uh, I'm going to say current problem in that, you know, it's not something that just happened, you know, like years ago or even like three years ago. I'm looking at a, a, a Channel 5 story that says it was just a nightmare. Vermont mother outraged over police response to teen in crisis. And it's a, it's a very, very disturbing story that uh, Channel 5 News on February 6, 2022 um, wrote about the responses. And if you read the, 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 the story, the, the transcript of the story, um, you'll see just how many problems there are with the current oversight system. Um, and just for, for folks to, uh, to understand, um, you know, we're talking about this, but all of the charter changes are um, going to be there. There's a, the actual language is posted on the city's website 
and it's in an official copy that you can find on the clerk's website. Uh, there is such a document there uh, called the official copy and that was part of the warning for the hearings that a lot of people came out and were very supportive of, uh, of this proposal. And um, every charter change is listed in it and this one in particular which I think is going to be number seven on the ballot, um, starts on page nine. And so you can just read through it. And so, I mean, what people are asking me when, uh, um, you know, when I'm talking about this, well, what do you want to leave people with? And that, I, I say, you should, read the, you should read it. And then you should call, if you have questions about it, questions about why, you can call Tyler, you can call me, you can, you know, reach out to at least get an understanding of what it is that is said in here if you want more clarification about it and how it all fits together. So, yeah. um, and if I could add, um, a really easy way to find the full language of this proposal, um, if you type in peopleforpoliceaccountability.com, uh, there's a website, has the full language of the proposal and other, you know, descriptions of the rationale, timelines of events surrounding police in our town. Um, so that's available Great. online. Great. So I um, want to get into some of these details now. Yeah. Um, and, and, I th and I think that the, the way that I'd, I'd like to, to approach it is actually by um, posing the criticisms mm -hmm. that the mayor has uh, has raised, and then ask you to give your your thoughts about them. So yeah. we're just gonna run gonna run through some. And that that sounds great. If I could just build on the the why very briefly um, it, regarding the mayor. It, so the, this the problem with the uh, police chief having sole disciplinary authority isn't a problem that only a minority of of people uh, think is an issue. Um, back in 2021, after uh, he vetoed this proposal, the mayor himself acknowledged that this is a real problem. Um, and he said, and, and this is a quote, that the current charter is problematic and that there is urgency to amend it. He further stated that such monopoly of important authority is an aberration in our democratic system, and we are likely to face continued disputes over future disciplinary actions until this issue is addressed. And he was right about that. Um, and at the time, he promised to address these issues with our charter. Uh, and since then, racial disparities in policing have persisted. Um, but here we are over two years later, and even the mayor's latest public safety plans have no mention of addressing this fundamental issue with the charter. Um, and so it's really critical that we take this opportunity where thousands of voters have put this on the ballot um, to, to move this forward. You know, it's ironic. It was just posted today. There's going to be a resolution. I will be opposing this resolution on uh, this coming Monday night that actually blames the lack of progress on strengthening the role of the commission and, and, and oversight on this petition as if this was somehow the people's fault. But it's always, it seems, um, an easy way. You blame the victims. Happens all the time. And so here, you all put this in in December. I think it was like in, yes, at the end the, of December. Yeah. And it's like barely a month and a half. And they've had two years. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you're starting to hear from the other side this um, desire for oversight. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I'm actually stunned. But let's, let's go over sure. um, some of the ideas because we're running uh, shorter of time. Um, they say that the proposal gives exclusive authority over BPD to the community board. Is that true? No, that's not true. Um, yeah, so the, the existing processes for the police chief and internal investigations uh, still stand. That those processes still exist in the police department. And in fact, as long as those investigations and disciplinary decisions and processes feel sufficient to this community control board, they won't have to do very much. They're there to review that process and step in if they feel a need to. I, I mean, I would say, and I'd, I'd point people to page 12 and 13 of the, uh, the document I was uh, talking about where 
the details are laid out, that the real focus is on extreme um, abuses of authority, the excess, excessive uh, force, uh, abuse of authority, unlawful arrest start, uh, stops and seizures and the like. And those things the board can, but it does not have to um, take jurisdiction of. And if it doesn't, then the chief gets to do uh, what he does. Otherwise, the board, the board can and will and I think should take up those important um, matters uh, because this process is much more open and transparent uh, and uh, will, I believe, build, uh, build truth, but uh, I mean trust in the community. But there's a whole section on what the uh, powers of the chief are in the disciplinary process. And I, I would ask people to look at uh, what the existing charter says, uh, because we took what exists now and plopped it right into the chief's um, authority. So, you know, the, the, the claim that it gives exclusive authority over BPT to the board or that it excludes the chief from all discipline is just flat out wrong. Um, and I would just let you know that if the, um, you know, they talk about this having exclusive authority over the, the department, but that's also just flat out wrong because what this is about is in investigations of discipline and then the due process to figure out what to do when just cause is found to, um, to do some discipline. And so all of the other things, the, the management and control, the rules and regulations, the, the directives, those are all still with the department. So I, I'm, I'm actually stunned that um, you, uh, uh, that they're making that claim. They, they, they claim that the board is empowered to discipline without input from the chief or any opportunity to appeal. Uh, I mean... Yeah, so, so when a board, when, when this board picks up a case, they're going to be picking up cases that have already begun investigation with the chief and the police department. And in order to truly understand what is going on, they're going to need to work closely with officers involved with the police chief to understand these things. Um, and in terms of appeal, um, the, the decisions of the board can be appealed and they go to court. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, both of these are, are just untrue. I mean, I mean the, the other thing, and I, I heard this criticism today, um, that this undoes all of the grievance um, rights that the, the BPOA have. Um, and that also isn't true because any discipline that is given by the chief can still go through the arbitration and grievance process. I mean, what is brought into the court system are the decisions of the board, but all of that authority of the chief that is still embedded in this proposal go the way that it has been. So again, um, whether people are reading the uh, proposal or they're just deciding to throw whatever they can on the wall to, 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 to try to defeat it, um, it really isn't fair. And it's one thing to have a debate about the merits, but l I think we should have a debate about the merits. and. Um, let me, let, me, let me flip to something in terms of another argument that they say, because it gets to merits and gets to changes. They say that this is binding on, um, you know, on, on, if, if it's passed, it's binding and it can't be amended by the mayor or the city attorney or the city council, but it still goes to the legislature, right? So talk yeah. about that. Yeah, so it is correct that if this is passed by the voters, city council and the mayor cannot make edits to it. But the next step in the process of changing the city charter is that this goes to the state legislature. And at that point, the legislature deliberates in order to pass it. They are in all likelihood will make changes to this proposal. I mean, that that's part of their deliberation process. Um, I. Yeah, it's it's hard to imagine there not being changes made to this, and you know we we stand by what is in this proposal, and we'll be there to advocate for those things. But um, you know, the, this is not all set in stone, and so you know where opposers want to hone in on very specific nitty gritty details of the proposal and say this is why it shouldn't be passed, 
there will be further deliberation and, and changes to be made here. Um, and what's critical is that you know we've been talking about police oversight for years now, or officials not talking about it for years now after acknowledging it's an issue. And so th this is our opportunity to move it forward. And some of these details can further be worked out at the next phase. I mean, I think that one of the issues, and we have a very short period of time now, so we won't get to too much more, is whether law enforcement um, people can be um, on the board. There's a lot of opportunity for members of law enforcement now and who are previously in law enforcement to have input and impact on the entire process that the board would have, be that advice, be that the training, um, et cetera. But um, that would be an area that, um, you know, there probably um, could be some, some changes. And while you guys have not advocated for that, um, it would not you know, that's just part of the process that, that we've, we've got here. Um, I'm trying to, uh, to, to bring us close to a, uh, to a close because I know that time is definitely short. Um, one of the arguments is that, they, that they, it, the proposal creates no standards or requirements to give due process. And let me just say without um, I've been wasting time asking is that, you know, there is a hearing process uh, under the board. So the chief has his own process, which is exactly what it is now. But under the board, there's a hearing process. There's investigation. There's the evidence production. There's the whole thing. When you think about due process, you think about the right to defend yourself against charges and to bring people to come and speak on your behalf and to cross-examine witnesses and the like. And that's what it is. And when you talk about things like excessive force, and I speak to you know, ca uh, you know cases that we've seen, um, this is critically important. Um, and um, it's, uh, it's just not fair and right to attack this proposal on, on that basis. Um, Tyler, give us a, give us a closing thought. Sure. Yeah. I think I just, again, want to underscore, um, that we've, we've talked to thousands of our neighbors and have found overwhelming support for this proposal from individuals and local and statewide organizations alike. We as a community put this on the ballot together and we have a rare opportunity to decide for ourselves to make our current policing system incrementally better for all people. I hope everyone will join me in voting yes for community oversight of police, question number seven on town meeting day, and in sending a clear message to our elected officials that we deserve public safety systems that will keep everyone safe. Thanks, Tyler. I'll, I'll be joining you in voting yes. Great. And I, I suspect that uh, many, many other people will as well. Well, thank you for the time. Uh, thank you, CCTV, for the opportunity. And I really look forward to, uh, to our next show and uh, bringing uh, somebody to talk about something as current and important as uh, community control of police. So thanks very much and have a great night. And thank you. Thank Good night. You.